Hello, it's me, Joe, again, and in this video we're going to learn how to apply the table of time to the drum set. This is part of a series of videos I've been making to help people really develop a good sense of the basic subdivisions that we need to know about for Western popular music in all its various styles and varieties. We're focusing on quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets and sixteenths, and we're going to learn how to count and play those on the drum set today. Please check out my previous videos on the subject to help you understand what's going on in this video. So just to refresh your memories, quarter notes sound like this. One, two, three, four. Eighth notes like this. One and two and three and four and. Triplets like this. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And finally, sixteenths like this. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So we have one beat, then we have two subdivisions of that beat in eighth notes, then we have three subdivisions, which is triplets, and four subdivisions, which is sixteenths. In due course, you can learn how to count fives and sixes and so on as well. But for now, we're just getting a solid knowledge of our quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and sixteenths. So let's start off playing some quarter notes on the drum kit. We're not going to do this in any specific way. I'm just going to show you some ideas that you can explore that will allow you to get used to playing these rhythmic patterns on your drum kit and really feeling and connecting with the, the different uh, rates of speed that each subdivision gives you and the, the length of the notes as well and what sort of tonal things you can play around with, um, even with a silly electric kit like this. Quarter notes to begin with. Uh, you know, quarter notes have a, a little bit of space to them if we're counting them at a slow rate of speed. So if I'm thinking about one, two, three, four, it might make sense to play longer sounds. I could play buzzes on my snare, for instance. One, two, three, four. Symbols. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. You want to feel a little bit the, the length of those quarter notes. Next, the eighth notes. We're not going to worry too much about the stickings, but you might find it easier to start off thinking about it before you play. So for example, you could try and practice playing the eighth notes as single strokes, right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, as you like. Uh, we can also play uh, double strokes, or we could play uh, unisons, we could play both hands at the same time, for example. But maybe you want to think about that before just jumping in. So I'm going to start off playing some single strokes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I can play some doubles. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Uh, and notice as well when I play a cymbal, it's quite nice to add the bass drum to that as well to give it a little bit of body. You don't have to though. Unison we can do, both hands at once. One and two and three and four and. We can play flams. One and two, three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Whatever you like there. Another thing you could also do is to substitute some bass drum notes for notes you're going to play on well, with your hands, basically. So, uh, for instance, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. You can do anything you like, really, uh, as long as you're kind of counting and, and trying to keep up with the rhythmic feel of that subdivision. Next, triplets. And again, I'm going to start with just single strokes. And when we're playing single stroke triplets, the right hand is going to land on the one and three if you're starting with your right hand, and the left hand is going to land on the two and four. So it kind of alternates the sides of the kit that the, the beat will be on. So we have something like this. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, and a four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, and a two and a, three and a, four. Another useful sticking for triplets would be something like right, left, left, or left, right, right, if you prefer. Right, left, left, right, left, left. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, two and a,
Once you get comfortable with this, you can start mixing up stickings. Again, the, the object of this exercise is to get yourself really used to just playing different rhythmic fills and subdivisions comfortably around the kit. As I showed you with the eighth notes, you can also substitute various uh, feet for the hands, right? So you could add a stroke with your bass drum or, or your left foot with a hi-hat or, you know, whichever, if the other way around, if your kit's arranged in a lefty style. And you could just try and do that, you know, again, keep counting and be aware of the feel of the subdivision. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a two and a three and a four. With triplets, it can be interesting to learn how to play uh, double strokes as well, and also, you know, paradiddles and other stickings. For example, if I want to play doubles, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a... Anything goes. The object is to try and very re relaxedly, is that a word, try and relaxedly uh, learn how to play nice, comfortable subdivisions around the kit. Eventually, you'll be able to improvise very freely with it. Finally, we have the sixteenths. And again, starting with single strokes, we just move around one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a four e and a one. You can see I used a little bit of dynamics there as well, um, and you can change the stickings. Uh, you can do double strokes again quite easily. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a four e and a. And foot substitution also good idea. One e and a two e and a three. E and a Once you can count and play each one of the subdivisions comfortably around the kit, the next thing to do is to play one bar of each in sequence, like this. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and a two and a three. Four and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one. Two, three, four. That's it. That's the exercise. Sit with that. Get used to playing those subdivisions uh, so that you know that you can just play sequences of four bars like that, feeling really, really comfortable with each one. And in my next video, I'm going to take it a step further and we're going to start mixing up the subdivisions. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this useful. Uh, as I said, the object of these videos is to provide some really, really basic uh, foundational stuff for people to work on uh, because when you're first starting out you want to have a really nice clear understanding of these basic concepts and even people who are more advanced seem to have learned quite a lot but also missed some fundamentals and it can be good to sort of go back and, and review the basics uh, periodically I know I do it all the time 
So uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and in particular, leave your comments below and let me know if you found this useful and if you have any ideas of uh, subjects you'd like me to address in the future. Now go away and practice.